bit of soul crossing for a guy called John Jacob Astor the Fourth, who went down with RMS Titanic in April of 1912 at the age of 47. I didn't do a full transition because it didn't feel like I needed to, but I was very, very interested in what happens when somebody goes down with the ship as he did. Now he was on the maiden voyage of the Titanic because his wife, Madeline, had got pregnant and he thought, well, I don't want the kid to be born in Europe. I want it to be born in America. So he books a ticket and sails across the Atlantic. He was one of the people who built the Astoria Hotel in New York. Next door was the Waldorf Hotel and eventually they joined together uh, to make the Waldorf Astoria. But he was a billionaire by today's standards. He was worth several million then. Today he'd be worth like 2.4 billion, something like that. So he was a very, very rich and privileged guy from a wealthy family. Apparently he tried to get into the lifeboat to be with his wife, but was told no, it was women and children only. And he was forced to just stand on the deck with his butler as the ship went down. It took about half an hour. Uh, he was later discovered in the water floating as body number 124. Um, but he wasn't just a, a guy who built a hotel, he was an inventor and he wrote a science fiction novel about life on Jupiter, I think, or something like that. But uh, an accomplished guy and a very, very rich one, but he went down like all the others who had no money whatsoever, he just drowned along with them. So I took a look at his crossing and when I went into that energy, which produces the kind of metaphorical cave that I always see, it had maybe three levels to it this time. It changes according to the needs of the narrative, really. It had three different levels, and he came falling in from a great height. You know when fishermen bring their nets over the side of a boat and then open them, and all the fish just slide out and slop around, flapping on the deck? It was like that, perhaps not surprising given that he was in a shipwreck, but he came in, he fell down, he slid down one level after another and landed in what looked like a crater at the bottom. When he composed himself and stood up, and I know this is going to sound really, really odd, he didn't know that he drowned. He didn't realize in his consciousness that he was dead. He thought he was in some kind of subterranean, subaquatic kingdom. It felt like that to him. He thought he'd had a stroke of good luck and had survived. And I went into his consciousness briefly, kind of aligned with it, in case he was seeing something I wasn't. And when I looked up, it was like he was in the parking garage of a building very, very early on in its construction. I mean, he did build hotels and stuff, but even so, it was really odd that he felt like he wasn't dead. He was just in the basement of a building and had to figure his way out. But then, finally, it dawned on him. It's like... That's how it ended. That was it. It's over now. Oh my God, why didn't I do more? Why didn't I try this? How come I'm not allowed to do that? His life of privilege meant nothing here. His wealth meant nothing here. What suddenly dawned on him in this moment was the things he hadn't done, the days he hadn't lived, the moments he'd squandered. It was such a profound feeling. And although I left it at the tunnel because it just seemed like he would have a regular kind of transition, I was struck by how powerful these feelings of loss were. He had a sense now that that was his life. Those 47 years had been his to do whatever he wanted with. 
And yes, he'd done some valuable things. That's not to put him down at all. But for him, all he could see were the holes in the structure. The things he'd not done. The days and months he'd wasted. And the fact that he had a child coming and would never get to see that child. And it made me debate just about my own life. How much time have I wasted in not being productive? How much time have I wasted in arguing with people? Or criticizing things or judging things? Instead of relishing the fact that I am here, which is a lottery in itself for all of us. It's a lottery that we won to be here. How often do we squander that advantage, that miracle, by engaging in worry or anxiety or fear or resenting people or fighting or arguing, striving unnecessarily for things that don't matter. John Jacob Astor won the lottery by being a comparative billionaire in those days. And all he could think of as he transitioned was that he wouldn't see his child and that he had wasted time and taken too much for granted and assumed his life would go on forever. And in the space of one night, it was gone. I'll never forget those pictures. I keep asking myself, is what I'm doing worthwhile? Is this a valuable expenditure of my time? Once you start doing that, and once you show gratitude for your life, for winning the lottery, and then as a way of displaying that gratitude, actually use your time here productively, then when the moment comes to go, you don't look back as he did and think, God, if only... Oh, I wish I had. Oh, why didn't I do that? We all do it. But seeing these pictures and seeing him cross over was, uh, was like a punch to my gut. And that's what I learned from John Jacob Astor the Fourth. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Cash Peters if you want. If you want to share, if you want to like, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great too. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.